Today's scripture reading is Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 through 44, the day and hour unknown. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And then they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill, one will be taken, the other left. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready. Because, of the, because the Son of Man will come at any hour when you do not expect him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Patty. I appreciate you sharing this morning. I was talking with another pastor a couple weeks ago, and I was like, so what are you doing for Advent? And he said, that's coming? Isn't that scary sometimes how the season of Advent and Christmas kind of scoops up on us and kind of gets us uh, a little unready or un, uh, unmotivated sometimes to be prepared for all those things because we're aware of what happens during this season of time and that's we start getting pretty busy right I looked at our calendar last night I think we have something scheduled every Friday or Saturday between now and Christmas Eve and that just happens naturally to some of us right we just kind of get bogged into things, and we want to do things, and we get excited about things, and none of those things are necessarily bad, but I want to take some moment here while we're still in November before we get too deep into the Christmas season to remind us and remind myself as well about what is this gift that we're going to celebrate, and what is this gift that we celebrate on more than just the 24th and the 25th of December? I don't know about you, but maybe you've been out shopping and maybe you've seen some of the stores. They've already decked their halls for months ago with some of the Christmas stuff. And Santa's helpers have been putting up greenery in here as well. And uh, some of you might be uh, working on your shopping list. Maybe you went shopping on Thursday or maybe you went shopping on, on, online Thursday. And maybe you, you went out on Black Friday and did some shopping as well. And well, the first Sunday of Advent, it, it arrives while this Thanksgiving leftovers are on many of our refrigerators still, and we're trying to figure out if we're going to make some kind of noodle casserole out of it or not. But while we're all in the midst of that, we're still preparing and getting ready for all the other things that we may feel unprepared for, for the season that is to come. So maybe you're in the presence of trying to buy presents, or maybe you're scheduling yourself for parties and visits you're going to have with family and friends, or maybe you're already working on your Christmas music station, how to program it in your car, because we just changed our clocks just a couple weeks ago. Maybe you're ready to reschedule your car so you can get to Christmas music quickly, or maybe you're trying to find out where the best lights are in your community to go drive around with your family or with your grandkids or people that you love and care for. Or maybe you're going to the Columbus Zoo and you're going to see the, the zoo lights and, and have hot chocolate and hope it doesn't rain on that day. Or maybe you're uh, trying to figure out when you're going to get pictures with Santa or hang the greens or wrap gifts. And that's all the important things. And those are all wonderful things. But I'm going to tell you one thing that I don't plan on doing. I don't plan on watching the Big Ten Championship next weekend. You feel the same way? Sometimes there's disappointment in how we feel about some of the seasons of life that we're in. But we don't want to take this Advent season and just color over the top of it some of the things that happen in the world that distract us from celebrating the reason for the season. Christmas is coming and we sometimes feel unprepared, but this is a time for us to be intentional about preparing for it. And so in this morning's uh, scripture reading, it's actually from Year A Lectionary, which it's not something we often do, but sometimes it's good to go back and read the lectionary and be reminded about what God has in store for us by reading some of these scriptures that we don't always delve into. Matthew chapter 24 reinforces the, reinforces the idea that the community must be ready. 
That there's something that we should be doing intentionally. Not just, just being, but we have to be intentionally readying for something. And in this context, to be ready is to continue to do what Jesus taught us to already do. Matthew is warning his readers to do what Jesus has already told them to do. And we spent a lot of time this summer preparing for what Jesus called us to do when we read Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7, otherwise known as the Sermon on the Mount. And so that's all coming back to us now. Like, oh, there's some fundamental things that Christ wanted us to be intentional about. And Matthew, when he wrote his gospel, the good news for us, one view of Jesus Christ and his story, it was in preparation for us to be in a further walk and preparing for Jesus' return. But we don't know what's going to happen, though. But we want to be ready for that. So this season of Advent is an annual reminder of the importance of faithfully doing what Jesus has asked us to do. Which, that's not me asking you to do it. That's, that's me reminding you that Jesus wants to have this relationship with you. This is not a matter of having the relationship with me. I want to have a relationship with you as well. But I don't have the eternal relationship to offer to you that Jesus Christ has. I have leftover turkey to offer, and none of you want that. Jesus does all these things for us that we might have this life expectancy, life expectancy that we're waiting and watching and preparing for all these things for us to be in a relationship. And these happen in mundane places, like out in the field, or maybe in your garage, or maybe in your basement, or maybe hovering over the sink, or maybe your workplace. All sorts of ordinary places that we don't think that this is where the story of you interacting with Jesus could take place, but it frequently does. At a time and place where we're not even prepared, but we want to be prepared. This is where faithfulness happens. These are the good and holy places where God calls us to experience life. It could happen in this room, which I'm thankful for. Many of you can give testimony and witness about how you've experienced God in new and powerful ways here. But God also loves to abundantly interact with you outside of this building. He invites us to do that so we could share it with others that their lives might be transformed. I have fond memories of Christmas. My, my, my childhood was pretty ideal. My parents remained married my entire life, and, and they, they really worked on, on my brothers and my sister and I and, and gave us all the things that we needed. Our house was never freezing cold. I remember there was times when we didn't have heating oil, and it was a little cooler than other times because it ran out. But overall, my family life was pretty ideal. And Christmas experiences were pretty ideal as well. I, I didn't have a, a Christmas where there was nothing under the, under the tree. And sometimes there was more plastic stuff than others. Sometimes there was more soft clothing things that I needed more than plastic things. And I turned out okay. I didn't get triggered, folks, right? But many of you probably also have similar stories. Or maybe your stories of Christmas are not so ideal or idyllic. And I, I'm aware of that. But I'm I'm sharing with you about my Christmas experience and specifically about the Advent experiences that I had because I grew up in a Christian home. My father was a United Methodist pastor, as was my grandma and my grandfather and lots of aunts and uncles and people. But we all had an emphasis that we made sure that we took during the Advent season. And during the Advent season, we focus on Jesus, right? And then we see a lot of the worldly things that we sometimes collide with this story with Jesus. And that's not a terrible thing, but we want to make sure that it doesn't superficially cover over the story of Jesus. And so we celebrate with presents, right? We like presents, and Jesus got presents, and so we get presents as well, and we give and exchange presents in, in remembrance about Jesus getting presents. That's why we celebrate that. Or, or maybe you just like giving presents and you forgot about the Jesus part. But we, as God followers, we, we celebrate that. And when it comes time for wrapping presents, my MO, my mode of operation for presents is let's wrap it as fast as we possibly can and get it done. I, I just want to get it covered and put some tape on it and get it under the tree as fast as possibly can because I'm aware that shortly after it's under the tree and it comes out from under the tree, it's going to be ripped and torn and it's going to be in the recycling or in the trash box just like that, right? And so for me personally, I, I, I don't usually spend a whole lot of time wrapping. I do it. My wife usually looks over at me and she judges me on my wrapping technique and you know, you could do this a little tighter here, or, you know, maybe you could use two pieces of paper here instead of just one. You don't have a paper stretcher, and 
That's just how I did it. My wife has a different technique. My dad had a whole other technique as well when he would wrap presents. And I remember my dad sitting down at the kitchen table wrapping presents when I was a kid. I don't know why he did it in front of all of us, but we saw other people's presents getting wrapped, and sometimes that's kind of demystifying. But my dad would sit down with just the right wrapping paper for whoever was going to get the present, and then he would use, instead of a pair of scissors, he would use one of these knives. Now, I'm sure some of the women in this church remember selling, we, I, we call these UNW knives, but a lot of churches used to sell these. Do you, does, this, does this ring a bell with anybody here? What's the brand? Anybody remember? There you go. And so uh, my dad would use this, and he'd sharpen that, because he came with a little sharpener too, and he'd sharpen that thing up, and then he would fold the paper, and he would slice and cut it. And it was like watching a butcher uh, wrap paper. But that's how my dad did it, and he was super intentional. And I was always like, wow, that's really cool. And as a mathematician who went into ministry, he was very particular about, very watchful in the preparation for this. In the wrapping of the present, he was always so intentional. He was so attuned to who was going to receive the gift and that the tape was always put in specific places. And this kind of awakened, I know in him, because he talked about it, kind of a, a spiritual generosity in him, that he took this so intentional. And it didn't take with me at all. I mean, there's lots of things that my dad does that I do today, but no, that's not the case. But when we work within, within the, con, the confines of where we've been gifted and how God calls us and gives us the opportunity to love and care for one another, that's sometimes how we do that with our gifts. And so even though I may not take as much time in the, the crafting of the wrapping of the gift, it's the giving of the gift that I really, really take notice of. But some of you are really particular about how somebody's wrapped a present, and you take notice. Clearly somebody cared and the way that they prepared this gift. And so I've got this box here, and I've got some paper, and my bow walked off somewhere this morning. One of the cats took off with it. I've got to find it still. But we're, we're going to work on this gift and preparing this in pre preparation for Christmas Eve and for ultimately Christmas Day because Christ didn't, he wasn't born on Christmas Eve, although sometimes we, we kind of celebrate that as if the birth took place on Christmas Eve, but we we celebrate his gift on Christmas Day and what that means for us. The work for us as Christians when we prepare these presents for one another or we're getting ready to receive these guests for us is, is accomplished in the spirit of wakefulness and watchfulness. Of wakefulness and watchfulness. Those aren't words that usually roll off our tongues, but that's something for us to be intentional as we take a look at this hope candle. The theologian C.S. Lewis shared that a Christian is not one who never goes wrong, but one who is enabled to repent and begin over after each stumble because the inner workings of Christ. That's directly looking at what Jesus had to say in Matthew's message for us this morning. And it seems in this text that the key is not only particularly on working, but it's, it's also important to us to have this awareness and sensitivity that Jesus names as watchfulness and wakefulness. Work is not always there for us, and sometimes we have to be intentional about preparing for the work that Jesus has in store for us. And work won't do everything. It can't do everything. And so we have to have hope. Hope will come from our work, but hope comes from somewhere outside beyond it. And again, we might experience that in the most mundane places that we're not even prepared for, but we are called to be prepared. And so as we ready ourselves for this ultimate gift that we're going to celebrate of gifts of Christ's revival, and be that his coming again or celebrating his birth, which we can do not just in December, we can do all the days. So as we prepare to wrap the gifts that we may have within our hearts, or maybe physically wrap as well. We wrap these gifts, we hang greens, we share songs, we plan parties, we want to be in merry with one another. And so we do this so we can watch and wait with a spirit of hope and a spirit of trust, of hope. The ultimate gift is coming. We have hope in that ultimate gift. We have this reminder but understand this, this is Jesus' words. Understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time the night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have left his house to be broken into. Well, that makes sense. Tell us a little more, Jesus. 
so you may also be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect Him. We want to be expecting. We want to be prepared. We don't want to be robbed of our gifts. We want to make sure that we have them because they're in the proper place that God has given to us. So who are you expecting this Advent season? What are you preparing for? Let's be honest. We're expecting Frosty and Rudolph and Santa, right? And we, we expect it's those, those gifts. And we're also expecting Bean Crosby and Nat Cole King and Brenda Lee and maybe uh, Mariah Carey and Wham and the Pentatonix music as well, too. Maybe you're expecting John McClain and Hans Gruber from Die Hard. Maybe you're expecting George Bailey and Mr. Potter as you experience a favorite black and white movie. Maybe you're experiencing or expecting new tires this season that you didn't want to have to buy, but you had to buy anyway. Maybe you're expecting to feel run down and tired. Maybe you're already anticipating December's going to be tough. January's going to be even harder because it's going to be dark and it's going to be cold. Maybe you're expecting to be blue or down. Maybe you're expecting the dread of all the season and all the busyness. I want to ask you, but put your focus on the hope of Jesus first, not on all the other distractions. Who are you expecting this Advent season? Who are you preparing for? Are you preparing for the thief? Are you preparing for Jesus? Have hope. The ultimate gift is coming. Would you pray with me? Mighty God, we thank you again for the reminders that are sometimes simple, but that are so grand for us during this season. So we ask you to send your Holy Spirit to speak to us, to nudge us, to call us, to remind us to remind one another as well that we're called to be in this relationship with you. And so we want to put that emphasis on you first during this Advent season. We're so thankful for all the other pieces that we get to be a part of, that we've been blessed with. So continue to bless us that we might put our focus on you and your gift, and we might find you anew this season. It's your name we pray.